Peace be with you. Welcome to this week's episode of The Dean Show. We have a lot to talk about. Imagine if you now had never experienced snow, a blessing from God, and now it's coming down in an area also that doesn't get much snow, and now you're admiring it, and now you're opened up to a whole new nightmare now of bullets raining at you, over a dozen. And that's what happened to a Muslim out in Dallas, and we have someone from Dallas to tell us kind of the details of what happened because you're not getting much from the media, are you? And we're also going to be talking about the new atheism along with the rise in, a, in that hate speech in the intolerance towards the most p- peaceful people in the world. That's right. Those who have submitted to the Creator, not the creation. Those people who love Jesus, they love His mother too. And there's a rise of hatred towards these people. Islamophobia, it's called. So we have a lot to cover on this week's show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is the Dean, the Dean 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 This is the Dean the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Saeed. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Nice to see you. Nice to have you on the Dean Show. You're a uh, doctor by profession, yes. co author, author of many books. Yes. Stuff. I wouldn't say many books, but the main book we've written uh, in 2004 was called God, Islam, and the Skeptic Mind. So you, uh, you're, pr- you're pretty busy out there um, uh, doing some great, wonderful work. Uh, tell us now, I had mentioned a story yes. about a tragic e- event. You know, something mm-hmm. started off with something beautiful, someone admiring just snow, yeah. right? Yeah. And then what happened from there? Yeah, so honestly, just a few days ago, some of you may have seen it in the news, probably most of you haven't, but I was just planning for my trip to come to Chicago from Dallas and... Uh, I get a bulletin from CARE, DFW, and they say that there was an Iraqi immigrant who was just out with his wife, you know, near the Richardson Mosque. And, you know, Dallas doesn't get a lot of snow, but we recently got four or five inches, uh, including snow at night, so it was very beautiful. SubhanAllah, you know how beautiful it is when the snow comes down. He was outside admiring the snow, taking pictures outside his apartment complex, and lo and behold, 15 bullets, you know, put him down. Um, you know, it's extremely unfortunate that this is the way things are going in this country right now, and we need to make a difference right now, and we need to stand up for our rights. Uh, as you might predict, they're not really giving it a lot of coverage right now, and they're not really saying anything clear about his motive. But when you shoot a guy 15 times, you know, who's just taking pictures of the snow, you know, it obviously brings up some major questions. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. And we send our condolences to all the. Uh uh, family members and everybody out there, and it's it's a shame that you know you have, you know, such uh, fringe elements who yeah. represent. Uh, I believe the numbers were like 0.019 percent, uh, and and the news is constantly bombarding right. the American people That's with right. uh, certain extreme elements as right. if they represent Islam. But now you have something at home here on home base. Definitely, you had it had this you know, terrorism taking place and, and the American people aren't aware of it. Is it because you think because this person is a Muslim? Allahu alam, you know, and Allah knows best, but we wouldn't be surprised. I mean, in Dallas, there is kind of a, a growing awareness of this. Some of, some of you may have heard also just a few weeks ago in the news about Pamela Geller. You all have maybe heard of her or our viewers have heard of her, where she's head of the American Defense Foundation. She announced uh, a cartoon contest. Uh, have you heard about that? No, I haven't. Yeah, this was big news where uh, they had some protests in the Dallas area when uh, Sound Vision came to Dallas to do a fundraising event, and a bunch of them got together and were protesting the event. But a few weeks after that event, and this is literally just a few weeks ago, they announced that uh, they're going to be having a cartoon drawing contest about, guess who, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and they're uh, accepting submissions from around the world online and they want cartoons that will insult the Prophet and they're intentionally doing all this and of course Pamela Geller announced that uh, there's a place called the Garland Special Event Center 
It's a big convention center in the Dallas suburb. They're announcing that they're going to have the award ceremony there, and they're awarding $10,000 to the winning entry. So this is the climate we're living in, and uh, yeah. this is the, you know, these are the times we're in. So it, you know, either we sit down and take it, or we, we respond in a, a positive way and put our positive message out. Uh, the found of founding fathers of, of uh, America, uh, do you think this was the intent that was created by the freedom of speech. Now, was it actually freedom? Because it seems like it's more of a freedom to insult. You follow Absolutely. me? We, would, we take strong exception to even insulting Jesus, peace be upon him, Absolutely. Moses, Abraham, any of these mighty messengers who called people to peace, called them to have a loving relationship with the creator of the heavens and earth, and now to insult them, to insult yes. Jesus or anyone. Yes. We, we take strong exception to. Obviously, we don't mm -hmm. uh, do anything now that would break the law, but what, what are your yes. comments on this about the freedom to insult mo mo uh, going away from yeah. really the, was yeah. this the intent of the founding fathers, do you think? Absolutely not. That's why there are plenty of laws in the U.S. also that do, do have some limitation on it, too. A lot of people don't realize that, but there are laws that limit uh, freedom of speech, laws against libel, against slander, and yes. so forth. And that's why I say we as Muslims need to be well aware of our rights. And we, the key thing we're asking for, we're not asking for special treatment. We want fair treatment. So uh, if we're not going to be insulting other people, if we're not insulting the president or other prophets or other people like that, then we shouldn't be either, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not an unfair thing to ask for. And here, too, we talk about the, uh, you know, the American way of life and the American dream. I mean, this person who was just shot was an Iraqi immigrant, right? He came from what environment? He came from an environment where there was shooting all the time. He came to a place where he thought it would be more peaceful, could start a new life, and look what happens. Mm -hmm. So that's the antithesis of the American dream, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, it's very unfortunate. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, it's, you mentioned, I mean, there's, there's limits to these things. And now we have yet another piece of video from that bus. I want to play this for the first time now. Well, if he wasn't identifiable before, the leader of that chant is certainly identifiable now. And as soon as you, I think the, the one of the uh, writers at that magazine, uh, some years back, he criticized a certain group of people, and they actually fired him. Absolutely. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Or have Absolutely. You, you, you know. So now. Um, yeah. This happened in France too. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, the Charlie Hebdo thing was been in the news, but I'm sure you're well aware that there was a cartoonist in France who was fired. That's yeah. You know, that's right? what I'm talking For, about. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and he had drawn some pictures of Nicolas Sarkozy's son and making fun of his son who had married a Jewish woman. What happened? He fired immediately. <laughs> exactly. But it yeah. seems like it's yeah. open day. Yeah. On those who, um, I mean, want the. I mentioned the most peaceful people. I mean, seriously, if you if you look at it, uh, you know, historically, if you look at it in context, uh, Muslims. You know, yeah. Jews actually yeah. ran towards, uh, from persecution, towards the, the Muslim lands and, and were taken care of. And Absolutely. There are more Jews alive after World War II in Albania than before World War II. There's no evidence of any Jew being turned over to the Nazis. To save a life is to go to paradise. I would sooner have my son killed than break my Bessa. I always ask these people, uh, what was it? Was it Bessa? Was it the Koran? What was it that, that you risked, you, your family, risked everything to save Jews, in many cases, strangers? And Absolutely. And that's why I keep emphasizing, we've got to get that positive message out. You know, and this book, too, is part of that, God, Islam, and the Skeptic Mind. It helps to promote understanding of the Muslim perspective, because we have a lot to offer, right? We have so much to offer when it comes to these age-old philosophical questions and with respect to tolerance and diversity. So we need to get that message out. We have a lot to talk about. We just wanted to give kind of a, a, a um, picture that people can now really see what's going on out there. And this was one of those tragic events. And it, and it, didn't, it, didn't, it didn't stop there. Before that, you had the Chapel Hill. You had the That's three right. innocent Absolutely. Uh, human beings who were killed by an atheist. And we're going to be talking about also the new atheism. Absolutely. Yeah. It's an important uh, trend that our... Uh, viewers really need to be aware of.
Yeah, so yeah. we're going to take a break. You're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot Hopefully. to talk about with the author of God, Islam, and the Skeptic Mind here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show. So do you feel it? I mean, the people in the community, I mentioned that there's a rise in hate speech. Absolutely. That there is a rise of hatred and tolerance towards, see, those people who worship the creator, not the creation, Muslims. And yes. uh, if some people link it back to the time when the Holocaust happened, you had these cartoons against mm -hmm. the, yes. the minority uh, Jews at the time, yes. and they were dehumanized, yes. and uh, the media, everybody was up against them and mm -hmm. you know, made them look as if they were unhuman and uncivil. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is yes. that great tragedy. You see we the similarity with what's going on well, here? Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yes. And that's why I keep saying, I mean, Either we sit down and take it, or you know we do our job and we do our part, because uh, you know the fact is with with things happening around the world, you know a common person on the street is just going to watch TV and and have negative impressions of us. But if we do a better job of getting our message out, we can slowly start to change the tide. And you're doing a great job with this book. Tell what what do you mean when when uh, you talk about the new atheism? What is the new atheism? Yeah, really, uh, we were just talking about that, that this is really a trend that uh, we really need to be aware of. There are a number of authors, uh, some of them are scientists, some of them are biologists, some of them are journalists, who are putting out uh, books and being very aggressive with the media, TV programs, and so forth, where they're not just promoting atheism, but they're very aggressively attacking religion, God, Islam, Christianity, everything and anything related to it. Uh, and, and we really need to be aware of this, and I'll give you one example why. The very fact that we wrote this book years ago uh, was motivated by one fact, and what happened was my father, who is a co-author of this book, Sayyid Farid Ahmed, he used to be a professor at the Islamic University in Malaysia, and he used to visit me in Dallas. So there were some older uncles who had some kids who were in their 20s now, and they said, can you please come and talk to my kids? And we're like, why? What's going on? They're not Muslim anymore. SubhanAllah, they're in their 20s, they grew up in a Muslim family, they're not even Muslim. We go there and we talk to them, and what happens? There's, typically, their doubts come down to a lot of the doubts that are addressed in this book, meaning they have doubts about uh, the existence of God, they have questions about science and evolution and how that relates to religion, they have questions about evil and suffering, they have questions about free will, predeterminism, they have questions about ethics and if it's relative or not, does this really need God, yes or no? You know, questions abound. This society teaches you to question everything. And a lot of us don't realize that our kids are growing up in that environment, going to university here, going to college here. And when they take these types of classes, they're taught to think a certain way and ask certain questions. So we have to, again, have a better uh, or do a better job of providing answers to these questions. Now someone comes up to you, university students and he starts yeah. to say, look, I don't believe in God, but I believe in science. That's right. Have you heard this statement? Absolutely. What, what do you tell them? So yeah, so it's a very common notion. In this book we go over like eight or nine different points that actually proves that science is not as absolute as people perceive it to be. And there, there's a, a lot of information about that. So for example, just, just to give you a couple, Right now, a lot of the so-called empiricists or modern scientists want to limit the scope of science to observed phenomena. 
when you limit the scope of it right at the outset as an a priori condition, then how are you going to have anything relevant about anything metaphysical? The best example of that is it's analogous to like some fish who are in the ocean. They're talking amongst themselves and they're like, one fish comes to the other and says, you know, there's this other crazy fish who thinks there's something called mountains and he's describing this huge thing. But there's, there's no way. That's total nonsense, right? Because they're living in their own world. Their whole world has been limited to the ocean. So if scientists limit their whole scope to what is observed only, then how can you achieve anything meaningful about that which is metaphysical or, or what transcends the physical realm? Similarly, there are a lot of criticisms of the scientific method, the fact that it's, you know, imp uh, bias can come into the interpretation of results. You can have the same results and have them interpreted in many different ways. Science is not as absolute as people think it is. You know, seeing is not always believing. There are things like optical illusions, mirages, you know, those things are also there too. Uh, and another key important point, I'll close on that, is that, you know, there are certain types of phenomena that are not necessarily seen, but we know they exist, right? For example, uh, emotions like love, uh, anger, jealousy, we all know they exist, but we infer their existence. Right? And that's why at least some of the scientists who are believers in God say, look, there is a role for using observation, obviously. You can't deny that. But then you can infer the existence of other entities based on that. Mm -hmm. right? And that's where science can play a more meaningful role in harmonizing this perceived conflict between science and religion. Because uh, you know in Islam, we've never had that conflict. We've never had that conflict. Exactly. Yeah. You know, in fact, science is all subservient to God and the rules and laws of the universe. Mm -hmm. So we've never had this conflict. But in Christianity, we've had this conflict. And now in our modern societies, this conflict is just growing, right? Where there's a, that perception that you said. Uh, do you know anything about the recent studies about the God spot? Yes, I've heard that. Yeah, in the brain where yes. they say, yes, familiar with What do you it? know about that? Yeah, so there are there is some research studies that say that there may be some so-called inwired or uh, inherent uh, characteristics of human beings that seek like a higher power. But in reading again and talking about new atheism, they immediately dismiss all that by saying that look, there may be some tendency towards that, but that they'll say that that doesn't uh, mean it's true, and they'll say that it's or they'll give it an evolutionary or adaptionary uh, spin to it, where they'll say this just helps human beings to cope with the world. Uh, mm. But they'll say it has no real uh, truth in it. It doesn't prove that there is a God. It's just saying that human beings have evolved this uh, type of tendency or propensity. Uh, um, no, no disrespect intended for anybody out there who practices any, any religion, but isn't this a byproduct now mm -hmm. because we haven't had this conflict with science, as you mentioned. You know, mm -hmm. Islam was at the pinnacle of discoveries and everything because yes. Islam, the Quran, Allah, the Creator encourages us to think, to ponder, you know, mm -hmm. to do this. Absolutely. But now in Christianity, you had conflicting yes. now science and the war between the Bible and the contradictions. What, what are your yes. thoughts on this? Yes. So that's what I mean. That, that conflict goes back several hundred years. It goes back to the time of the Renaissance or the so-called Age of Enlightenment. And to, to me, that conflict has, has certainly not gone away. Uh, but it really means that, again, we as Muslims, where we don't have this conflict, we have to get our message yeah. out and let non-Muslims know that there really shouldn't be this conflict. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, everything in the Quran and the Hadith and in our traditions are in consonance and in resonance with science and yes. not the other way around. Unfortunately, I, when I talk to people, I tell them that unfortunately, the response of the church and some of the things that are present in, in the Bible and in their Christian traditions do have some conflict with modern science and it's natural that that develop. It was inevitable. Mm -hmm. But that's where we have to get our message out and say, look, all religions are not the same. You know, mm -hmm. We say that Islam is completely in harmony with, with, with true science. And that's an absolute fact. If you look into this way of life, that is simple. It's based on simplicity. It has the evidence, the proofs, and it's all there. And that's what it distinguishes it from the rest. Islam, submission to the Creator, not the creation. And the Quran 
Tamper Free, Tamper Proof. It's a living miracle. <laughs> Read it. Check it out. We'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Islamic Terrorism. Misconception. Muslims are terrorists. This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody it is quickly regarded as terrorism? Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However, all over the world people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include, Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, if they seek peace, then you seek peace. Which means, do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Saeed. What's uh, the Islamic view on, on the Darwin's uh, evolution? What, what do we, we believe as Muslims on evolution? Yeah, that too is, a, again, a very important topic because it's one of the key tools that the movement of new atheism holds on to. It's a key tool that they've used for years and decades to try to weaken the foundation of religion and belief in God. In the book, we go over, again, at least six or seven points in detail that are very uh, logical criticisms of the modern movement of evolution. You know, as Muslims, we have no issue with what we call microevolution or adaptionary changes. You know, for example, Darwin spoke about the finches on the Galapagos Islands and how their beaks tended to change slightly based on their environment. No problem with that, right? I don't think any Muslim would. But when you extend that and they have, and they've extended that definition of Darwinian evolution to include the fact that uh, so-called, um, there's a, a, they say that all species arose by descent from a single common ancestor. So it's not just about saying that human beings came from apes. It's saying that apes, monkeys, giraffes, crocodiles, everything, all planets, all, or sorry, all creatures came back to a single origin or a single uh, uh, ancestor, which is a huge statement, you know, and that's the, one of the big problems, just to give you a couple examples, there's something called the missing fossil record if everything came down to a single ancestor, shouldn't there be you know, millions of intermediary stages of fossils between creatures, right? The fact is they don't have it. And even if you look at some of the top evolutionists like Richard Dawkins, they have no explanation for that. Even Darwin himself said that this could be one of the biggest criticisms of, of evolution. And their answer right now is just to say, well, you know, we're, we'll eventually find those, those missing links we haven't found it, right? Just to give you another example, does Darwinian evolution explain anything about the origin of the universe or the origin of the first cell or the origin of human beings? Nothing, mm -hmm. absolutely nothing. So how does that put down religion? No, it can't, it still doesn't explain those, right? Uh, it, another quick example, does it say anything about how consciousness evolved? Richard Dawkins, again, in the book, The God Delusion, he says that uh, consciousness is the most profound mystery facing biology because you can explain certain microevolutionary adaptations, but how do you get this sudden dramatic leap from a physical body to having consciousness where we are aware and we're able to talk about these things now? No explanation. They'll try to give it a material explanation because they're materialists, but they haven't been able to. So for that too, they say, well, We'll eventually find that explanation. Yeah, you know, there's a lot, a lot of doubt here. It's certainly not uh, absolute. Right? Now we have a, a lot of 
God conscious scientists, scientists who go deep into science and they realize that there's no way mathematically, scientifically, that all of this could come by chance. I mean, I just can't wrap my mind around any logical, right. sensible person. Now, obviously, what separates Islam from the rest mm -hmm. is that, you know, all these man made religions where people are worshiping sticks, stones, bones, human beings, men, women, yeah. stars, and, and all, and the yeah. universe, but we just worship the one who created all these things, and That's Islam right. just makes sense. But why do scientists, many of them, in the universities, they get blacklisted now that's right. as soon as they start uh, arguing design. Why is that, do you think? That's right. Well, that's, you know, look who's in charge, mm. right? So just like everything else, they've been, as I said, they've been very aggressive in their movement and, and spreading their ideas. It's taken hold. You have key people in, in politics also who support that ideology. And so it, it starts to slowly take hold. Uh, but the fact is, the, you're right, there's still people who do question it. As an example, in the book we mentioned, there are actually several hundred professors, academics, doctors, scientists who provide biological criticisms or scientific criticisms of evolution, and that's available and mentioned in the book. So they're out there, but, you know, it's still a minority. Uh, but their arguments are there, and we've got to look into them. They're not the ones that are now on the payroll of the university, <laughs> and now they're, they're not yeah. uh, bound exactly. to maybe losing their job or whatnot, yeah. so they can f speak freely. We, you know, we were talking about freedom of speech earlier. Some of them do end up losing their job conveniently or based on some other, you know, explanations or yeah. rationales, but uh, you're right. That's another way that freedom of speech is being suppressed in this mm -hmm. country, unfortunately. Uh, do you see sometimes, I mean, uh, we use a lot of these because it's innate in us to believe in the Creator. Mm -hmm. Now you have a lot of things out there calling us to fulfill our cardinal desires, and let's mm -hmm. talk about, let's say, uh, the young university student. Now mm -hmm. here, you know, you know that to be in school, to be in, in the university is different than to cut class and be out there just, you know, um, doing whatever you want. That's the easy way. Mm -hmm. But now you have less people in the higher you go up and, yeah. and, and, and Islam, the, the more you go up, the more discipline it takes, the more you control yourself to become a better human being. So do you think some people use this? There are some legitimate doubts that obviously if you ask questions and you're sincere, God will guide yes. you. But yeah. do you think some people use these doubts to go ahead and just leave off religion altogether so they can go have a good time? Do you get yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely, is that? yeah, absolutely. And we know and from Islamic teachings not, not, that, no, I'm, I'm sorry, yes. not to say you can't have a good time in Islam, yes. but just to go do some of the most wretched things. Yes, absolutely. So we know very well in Islam that Satan makes sin and disobedience very tempting for us and very beautiful. He yes. beautifies it. And especially what, when you're at a young age, you know, you're, you're constantly weighing those decisions. Should mm -hmm. I do? Should I not do? self-control, what they call mujahadat al-nafs, yeah. that self-control that's really the core or essence of Islam. So it's not easy. But the fact is that God has given us the ability to reject, you know, this insinuations and proddings of Satan too. Uh, so he, he knows what we're capable of. Like he says in the Quran too that, the, uh, that shaitan doesn't have any sultan or authority over us. Say, uh, Satan also says in the Quran, "Fala talu muni walumu anfusakum." So don't blame me; blame yourselves. <clears throat> so what does that mean? It means that uh, in the end, you can't just blame Satan. You can't come and blame God for your own problems. You still got to go back to your own free will and say that, look, I can make the right decisions, and that's where knowledge comes in. That's where our ibadah comes in. That's where our deen comes in to help make it easier. And that's where you have to have the right social group, the right peer group to help make those decisions easier. Now, you have a lot of things you cover here. I mean, some great things. Uh, what is evil, suffering, God and science, the scientific God, mathematic proofs, medical proofs, uh, Darwin evolution, the list goes on, Islam and knowledge, and yes. uh, all of these things. Now, if somebody really is having some doubts, parents want to help their kids, university student really wants to, okay, have these doubts cleared. Do you feel that if they go through this book sincerely looking for the truth that this will help to shatter those doubts? We honestly do. It's not me thinking that we've actually, because uh, this book came out, the first edition in 2004, and alhamdulillah, it's been very well received. Uh, you've had a guest on this show, brother. A friend of mine, Norman yes. He, he actually mentioned this book on the show. That's right. Yeah. And, and a lot of the viewers, I'm sure, know Brother Noman well. He, he lives in the Dallas area. I know him well, alhamdulillah. He himself, when he described his story when he was in New York, tells about how he had all those, all those doubts, right? Yeah. 
and he was basically agnostic or atheist. He, he himself says that, right? Yes. But then his whole life was transformed. So that's when he read this book too, he felt that it addressed a lot of the <coughs> key questions that people had you know, when they're going through these difficult times. So uh, again, we can't be naive, especially if we're kind of older parents and our kids are younger here or we've immigrated from other countries. We have to realize that our kids are exposed to a lot in this society and they're exposed to various questions and doubts. And if we don't answer them, what's gonna happen? You know, a lot of the social scientists say, if you don't take care of these things, with each su successive generation, what happens? You start to lose your language, you lose your culture, and then you lose your religion. Yes. Right? Unless you really work hard to take care of these things. Absolutely. Where can people get the book? Where can people get the book? So, alhamdulillah, it's on, available on Amazon.com. We're trying to get some additional uh, Muslim distributors, uh, but alhamdulillah, it's available, uh, like I said, Amazon.com. That's right. God, Islam, and the skeptic mind. Dr. Saeed, thank you so much for being with thank us here. Thank you so much. Diesel. Really appreciate it. Nice thank being you. here. Thank, thank you. you. Peace be with you. Salam alaikum. And that was Dr. Saeed, God, Islam, and the skeptic mind. Get the book. And hatred, hate speech, is a bitter pill to swallow, and it only makes you more sick. That's right. And Islam doesn't teach us to be out there hating teaches us really to love and we love for all of mankind so we really to combat this negative force we need to create awareness we need to spread the love show the peace of Islam get out there and invite people share with people it's not our job to try to convert anybody no but it's out there to give people an alternative to all of the social illnesses the diseases that are clogging the mind people aren't are, are, are on antidepressants Prozac people are committing suicide and Islam, so Mishra the Creator, not the creation, yes, has all the solutions. But if they don't want to accept, they reject, hey, to you, your way, to ours, ours. But now we might have a new friend, a neighbor that sees that, hey, this Muslim really cares about me and society. But how are they going to know that if they get all the information from the haters, from the Islamophobes, who are just making themselves more sick? We hope that you've gotten the benefit. We'll see you next time. Inshallah, condolences to all those innocent people who have been recently killed that you don't get to hear a lot, that, a lot of that on the media. And stay safe. We'll see you next time. Subscribe if you haven't already. Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. Please subscribe to The Dean Show. Follow us on our official Facebook and Twitter pages in the links below. Please also help support The Dean Show by making a donation in the link below.